This week, Google paid out $3.4 million for vulnerabilities reported in 2018. Hackers target WordPress sites via the WP cost estimation plugin. Facebook paid $25,000 for a CSRF exploit that leads to account takeover. And POC exploit code for recent container escape flaw and run C published online. Jason Wood from Paladin Security joins us for expert commentary on Apple sued because two-factor authentication. Oh, I give up. All that and more on this episode of Hack Naked News. This is Security Weekly. For security professionals, by security professionals. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show that brings you the security news each week. And despite popular belief, we do wear pants. It's Hack Naked News. Are you worried about PCI compliance? Does your development team understand or care about security? Are you ready to face a breach of your customer's sensitive data? See the worst that can happen before it does. Black Hills Information Security can help you help management see the future. Email consulting at blackhillsinfosec.com to find out how a web application penetration test can mitigate the risk before you go live. Welcome, everybody, to Hack Naked News, episode number 208 for February 19th, 2019. I am your host today, Matt Alderman, sitting in for Paul Asadorian. RSA Conference 2019 is coming up March 4th to 8th in San Francisco. Go to rsaconference.com forward slash security weekly dash US 19 to register now using the discount code 5U9S. WFD to receive $100 off full conference pass. If you are interested in booking an interview or briefing with Security Weekly, please go to securityweekly.com forward slash conference request to submit your request. Submission deadline for interviews or briefings is February 22nd at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Ocean is hosting RI Cybersecurity Exchange Day on March 13th at the O'Hare Academic Building at Salve Regina in Newport, Rhode Island. Register now at ocean, O-S-H-E-A-N dot org forward slash events. All right, and now for the news. Google paid out $3.4 million for vulnerabilities reported in 2018. Google revealed that it paid out a total of uh, $3.4 million for flaws reported in 2018 by researchers through its Vulnerability Reward Program. The $3.4 million was awarded for 1,319 reports submitted by 317 researchers from 78 countries. The largest single reward was $41,000, and $181,000 was donated to charity. Half of the awards, which is $1.7 million, were for flaws affecting Android and Chrome. In 2017, Google paid out a total of $2.9 million, roughly $2.2 million for Android and Chrome flaws. Story number two, hackers target WordPress sites via WP cost estimation plugin. Malicious actors have been hacking WordPress sites by exploiting vulnerabilities in a fairly popular plugin called WP Cost Estimation and Payment Forms Builder. The plugin, developed by Lupus, allows WordPress site administrators to create cost calculators and payment forms. Malicious actors have been exploiting two vulnerabilities related to uploading and deleting files. The first flaw allows the upload of malicious PHP files with an apparently harmless extension. The second flaw allows attackers to delete arbitrary files. Both flaws were patched months ago, but since no security warning was issued, many users have not installed the updates and left their websites vulnerable to attacks. Number three, Facebook paid $25,000 for a CSRF exploit that leads to account takeover. Facebook paid a $25,000 bounty for a critical cross-site request forgery vulnerability that could have been exploited to hijack accounts simply by tricking users into clicking on a link. The flaw resides in the facebook.com forward slash comment forward slash dialogue underscore do not use endpoint. 
by adding the argument question mark URL equals a URL, a post request with the CSRF token FB underscore DTSG added to the request body, a hacker can bypass CSRF protections and trick them into clicking a malicious URL. The flaw was fixed by Facebook on January 31st, 2019, and the bounty was paid on February 12th, 2019. Number four, Mega Crackers back with nearly 100 million new stolen data records. Last week, we discussed that 620 million breach records from 16 sites were for sale on the dark web, but that was only phase one. The hacker, whose identity isn't known, released another 127 million records from eight sites late last week and another 91 million records from another eight sites over the weekend. To date, the hacker has revealed breaches at 30 companies totaling 841 million records. The common software in all 30 breaches is Postgres SQL, an open source database project. Postgres SQL is currently unaware of any patched or unpatched vulnerabilities that could have caused the breaches. Story number five is privilege escalation vulnerability found in LG Device Manager. A privilege escalation vulnerability that allows attackers to elevate permissions to system has been found in the LG device manager applications for its laptops. The security hole tracked as CVE 2019-8372 allows an attacker who already has non-admin access to the targeted device to abuse the device manager app to escalate privilege to system. The flaw is within the low-level hardware access kernel mode driver which includes IOCTL dispatch functions that can be used to read and write to arbitrary physical memory. When it is loaded, the device created by the driver is accessible to non-administrative users, which could allow them to leverage those functions to elevate privileges. The issue was reported to LG on November 18th, 2018, and the patch was released on February 13th, 2019. Article 6 is POC exploit code for recent container escape flaw in Run C published online. So last week we talked about the vulnerability. This week the exploit is now available. The POC exploit code for the container escape was published on GitHub. Its execution requires root, UID 0, inside the container. The POC code allows a malicious container to overwrite the host run C binary and gain root level code execution on the host. This is why I've been saying for years, you cannot give up root access to your containers. Updates have been released or are being worked on across the container and cloud platform providers. And our last story is Kali Linux 2019.1 released, operating system for hackers. Great news for hackers and penetration testers. Offensive Security has, rele has just released Kali, Kali Linux 2019.1, the first 2019 version of its Swiss Army knife for cybersecurity professionals. This new version comes with the latest version of Metasploit, which includes database and automation APIs, new evasion capabilities, and usability improvements throughout, making it a, a more efficient platform for penetration testers. We'll take a short break, then our expert commentary for the week from Jason Wood. Today's determined attackers easily bypass even the most advanced network defenses. Trying to ramp up staff to detect their back doors can cost thousands of dollars and take months, even years. With Active Countermeasures AI Hunter, we enable junior analysts to detect even the most advanced back doors in a matter of hours. Sign up for a demo and purchase our product today by visiting activecountermeasures.com forward slash PSW. Active Countermeasures, make every analyst a hunter. Secure World Boston is hosting their 15th annual conference March 27th to the 28th at the Heinz Convention Center. Security Weekly, weekly listeners have can save $100 off a full conference pass by visiting secureworldexpo.com and using the discount code SECURITYWEEKLY. Also, join us April 1st to 3rd at Disney's Contemporary Resort for InfoSec World 2019. Visit infosecworld.misty.com forward slash security dash weekly and use the registration code OS19-secweek 
for 15% off the main conference or world pass. We will be recording at InfoSec World 2019. If you are interested in booking an interview or briefing with Security Weekly, please visit securityweekly.com forward slash conference request to learn more. All right, we welcome Jason Wood as he joins us today for expert commentary on Apple being sued over their two-factor authentication setup. Yeah, that's right, folks. Apple has been slapped with a class action lawsuit because of their two-factor authentication implementation. Um, I actually saw this news uh, a little bit earlier this month, but uh, Graham Cluley has a pretty amusing blog post that he wrote up that I've got the link to in the show notes. What it boils down to is a gentleman named Jay Brodsky has decided that Apple's two-factor authentication is just too burdensome for the world to bear. Therefore, he's filed this class action lawsuit on our behalf to protect us from this, this implementation. Uh, so here, here's some of the highlights that Graham points out in his blog post. First, the plaintiff alleges that Apple turned on two-factor authentication without his permission. Somehow this just happened magically without him doing anything. Now, I have got a lot of Apple devices, and I seem to recall that I had to go in and turn this on uh, explicitly. This didn't suddenly appear. Maybe this is something that's changed since I enabled it, because it has been a little while, but um, seems a little odd here. Jason, on this one, I, I do think Apple changed their implementation sometime last year that made the two-factor authentication required, I think, uh, okay. for, for your account. I, I'm pretty sure they did that. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, that was one thing I wasn't sure of because, like I said, I turned this on a while back. Um, so I wasn't, I wasn't sure whether or not that was legitimate or not. Um, Mr. Brodsky also complains that he has to remember his password and have access to a trusted device which, like Graham, I was a little puzzled over because that is, of course, the, uh, the standard for two-factor authentication. You know, something you know, some paired with something you have or you are in the case of, like, biometrics. Uh, but I guess if this got turned on on him automatically, then maybe you, that's, that's the, his complaint here with needing to know both of the, or needing to know his password and have the device. Still seems a little ridiculous. Um, he added a number of other complaints. One was the, he just complained that the, uh, the process is just a pain in the behind to use. And, you know, I, as we were talking before the show about this, this is actually something I've griped about a little bit, but that's mostly because I have a number of different devices and they're all in close proximity to me. And so whenever I use this, like I have four devices pinging at me saying I need to authorize this. So you, not, you know, but it's not a big deal. You just go ahead and use it. Um, he also complains that you can't turn it off um, once it's been enabled for 14 days. And the amount of time that it takes you to enter in your passcode is causing economic damage. Now, I, I, I'm not so sure about this economic damage one. I mean, we're talking about a few seconds to do this. Um, it doesn't take very long unless I've left my phone in the other room. Uh, of course, like I said, he could have misplaced his phone. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's why it took five minutes or so uh, to go looking for it. Apple Insider looked at this claim and made the comment that definitely nowhere close to uh, two to five minutes. They clocked it at about 22 seconds. Also, according to Apple Insider, um, this was something I picked up in an in a extra article. Brodsky alleges that Apple has violated the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act with this, um, which surprised me a little bit. Uh, maybe this is leaning back on the idea that this was forced on him. I, I'm not sure. But as, as a response to all of these unjust, in quotes, action, Brodsky is demanding, and this is a quote from the complaint, all funds, revenues, and benefits the defendant has unjustly received as a result of its actions rightly belong to uh, 
they right, the, all the funds rightly belong to the plaintiff and the class, meaning anybody who gets included in this class action lawsuit should it proceed forward. So I, again, whatever money that Apple has made apparently off their two-factor authentication system, which I can't think of how much revenue that would be. I, I don't see Apple, haven't seen anything that suggests Apple is monetizing this, um, should belong to Brodsky and anybody else who uses two-factor authentication. Apple's two-factor authentication. Now, I, one of the thoughts I had about this, I've seen a lot of people get really upset over security projects before. Uh, I can remember working on a project over changes to uh, our authentication system was required by some of our clients that, uh, that we had to implement. And I got to bear the brunt of that because, well, I was, I was around and available to take that. But this strikes me as a little bit ridiculous because, again, you know, you have it with you. It takes a few seconds your account to to enter in, and you're done, and your account is more secure because of it. The, um, this one, it, I, this puzzles me a little bit because we've been talking about the need for two-factor authentication to help protect our accounts, protect our data, and everything else. And here we have an implementation that's. I don't think difficult to use at all because I've used it for years, just like you, Jason. Uh, I did somehow happen to catch that it was a requirement, but I, I set it up before it was a requirement. And it's, it's not that hard to use. You don't have to use it all the time. When you add a new device, you need to, to do it. Um, occasionally, when you log into your online account, you need it. So it's not like you need it constantly either. And it just, just you know, befuddles me on, you know, we try to protect customers' data and information. This is a known technique of two-factor authentication. And now there's a lawsuit because it's too burdensome. I, I, you know, I guess it goes back to my, my philosophy is humans are just lazy and, and this is why we get hacked all the time. Yeah, I, I did make the comment initially um, as I was reading this, this is why we can't have nice things. Um, Graham calls for somebody to give this Biv Brodsky and Android device so he can settle down. Uh, but my thought is if he ever sees Google has two factor authentication as well, his yeah, head then is he's going to explode and this is going to be collusion. You know, you yeah, know. He's, yeah, he's going to sue Google for Google Authenticator next if we gave him an Android device. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so I don't have a clue how this one's going to play out in the courts. Uh, amazingly enough, he has legal representation. Lawyers agreed to take this one on. I can only guess that there's going to be some kind of settlement and it's going to go away at some point. I, I doubt we'll really see any changes to act, Apple's two-factor authentication system. And I certainly can't see that Apple is going to, and again, I quote from the complaint, disgorge all of its ill-gotten gains to the plaintiff and other class members, end quote. So... I guess their uh, their opinion is the economic impact of passwords being easily guessed, accounts being compromised, and all the stuff that goes with that is much less than that of two factor authentication. I don't know. Be interesting to see how this one plays out in the courts. Yes, it will. Jason, always a pleasure getting your insights on Hack Naked News. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next week on Hack Naked News. <laughs>